At first glance, this video may seem a bit redundant. I mean, what is there to learn about walking behind an enemy and clicking and, well... But you'd be surprised how many people don't know the basic fundamentals of securing a backstab. Because like with any mechanic in TF2, there are a ton of nuances and tricks to backstabbing that, if left unknown, could leave you stuck at the bottom of the bell curve. So, as a believer in the fact that knowledge is power, I will now proceed to rattle off everything I know about backstabs. But first, for such a fundamental spy mechanic, we need to start from the basics. A backstab occurs when you are behind your target and within melee range. When this happens, left-clicking with the knife out will result in an instant kill. Unlike other melee attacks, there is no delay between a left-click and a backstab, as usually a full swing of a weapon has a 0.25 second delay between clicking and dealing damage. This kind of makes sense though, as the spy raises his knife ready to stab whenever he is within range of a successful backstab, giving a visual indicator to the player that now is go time, leaving only a simple left-click to finish the job. This knife-raising animation even plays when behind behind disguised and cloaked spies, which has some strange logical implications that I don't really want to get into right now, but it makes for a quick and useful spy checking method against suspicious players, or for attempting to sniff out cloaked and retreating spies while they're in melee range. A lot of getting good at backstabs requires getting a feel for this backstab range, and this usually comes from pure practice. The more you stab, the easier it will be to identify when you can stab. Eventually you'll reach a point where the knife raising animation barely even plays when you stab, just because you've gotten so used to being able to stab from that distance, without relying on the visual indicator of the spy preparing to stab. Or on the contrary, maybe in a position to be able to stab, but end up just dealing melee damage instead. This is known as a fail stab, and occurs primarily due to good old lag, and shouldn't really be taken as a failure on your part, mainly just bad luck and random chance. But hey, TF2 is no stranger to random chance causing negative impacts, am I right? So really, a lot of of it comes down to intuition, practice, and knowledge of what you can do versus what your opponent can do. Speaking of what your opponent can do... Yeah, this is gonna happen a lot. When your opponent moves in an unexpected way that causes you to deal melee damage when you thought you could have backstabbed, this happens. It's referred to by the community as a butter knife, probably because your knife slips off your opponent like butter or something, or, or it does the amount of damage a butter knife would do, I don't really know. But I do know three things. They suck, I hate them, and literally why would you turn around here? There is no reason for you to turn around- As I say, expect this to happen a lot when you're out there practicing. But know that you will get better at being cautious and anticipating your enemy's movements over time. But here's a couple tips that'll help you get there faster. First thing, be patient. TF2 players are constantly looking for more gameplay. So if they're out there with nothing to do, and you present yourself as an option for gameplay, they're gonna kill you. But if you wait till they're already preoccupied with gameplay, such as shooting at your team, or upgrading a building or something, then you can secure the kill. Try looking at the game from their perspective. Are they about to be attacked and therefore retreat into you? Are they about to push forward with uber charge and need to move to a better location to make the most of it? Are they walking to the nearest ammo kit after spending all their metal upgrading a dispenser? Or to the nearest health kit after being set on fire by a rogue score? Shot. Are they reloading their launcher to prepare a sticky trap? What about waiting for a teleporter to recharge, pushing the cap, hard scoped and charging on a heavy in the distance? There are so many situations where a spy can easily secure a kill that all my advice can boil down to is to just wait for the right moment. Spy is pretty weak in 1v1 situations, as I explained in another video, but is the pure definition of a glass cannon. When he can do well, he absolutely does well. The skill in Spy comes from identifying exactly when he can do well and making the most of the opportunity. So analyse your enemy's most likely movements, combined with what you know about them from previous encounters, wait for the perfect moment, and most importantly, relax. The more control you can have over this crucial moment when you're both exposed and preparing to kill, the better. So take a deep breath if you need to, and just remember before you go in that success isn't guaranteed, and failure isn't inherently bad. You learn more from failing than you do from succeeding, the difference being DOPAMINE. And nothing is more satisfying than pulling off a kill that you know you wouldn't have been able to do had you not had a prior engagement with your target and lost. Just when you do go for a kill, try your best to commit to the stab. Getting a kill and then dying may be the big meme of inadequate spy players, but as long as you're not dying after every kill, and the kill you did get was worth the trade, like a medic or an especially oppressive sniper, you did pretty alright. Remember, blue players have a shorter respawn time than red players on payload and attack defend maps, meaning you're forgiven more for dying as spy on offense, where committing to the stab is much more rewarding. 
If you're running the kunai, which gives you health after a backstab, then there's no reason you should ever really back out of a stab at the last minute, since any damage you're likely to take will be nullified by the health gain. Unless, of course, you're about to be backstabbed or take an insurmountable amount of damage. Feel free to equip the Dead Ringer while practicing too. It gives you a quick damage shield and escape should you be seen after the stab. And to get mechanical here, a backstab isn't actually as much of a stab in the back as you'd think. In fact, about half a player's hitbox, the area in which they can be hit, is technically backstab range. And no, it does not factor in whether the target is holding their weapon a certain way as many people believe, but instead slices straight through the hitbox's center, covering the entire back half of the enemy's current view. Factor in that lag compensation always favors the aggressor, and you can end up with a few kills that look like they shouldn't have been a backstab from the target's perspective. However, most of these are not face stabs as people would think. Those are usually down to latency and laggy character models, and are more of a random glitch than a mechanic that can be taken advantage of. What you can take advantage of is the generous backstab hit registration, which creates one of my favorite things in TF2, trick stabs. <laughs> Trick stabs are very precise and fun manoeuvres to pull off that should only really be used in last resort situations, such as attempting to kill a chasing enemy, or to use with weapons like the kunai to give yourself a health boost and a better chance of escape from an unfavourable situation. But you can use trick stabs to feel cool, I, I get it, they feel cool. Essentially, trick stabs occur when you force an enemy to be within the rather forgiving backstab range. This can be done a variety of ways, such as forcing an enemy into engaging with melee, walking one direction with your strafe key, and then walking the other as soon as they're in melee range. In doing this, the enemy Enemy will be lagging behind your movements, aiming to swing their weapon at where they think you will be, rather than where you are. This is commonly called a matador stab, and is probably the most used trick stab due to how flexibly it can be applied to a situation. Just walk one direction, then walk the other. Usually though, you have to be prepared to tank a melee hit when attempting to pull this off, as the enemy may get in at least one swing before they die, so it's good practice to be above 65 HP at all times. There's also the rarer cousin to the matador, the corner stab. Named as such because it requires you to run around a corner out of your enemy's line of sight as if retreating, and then taking a wide angle strafe back around the corner towards the enemy, who will be attempting to cut the corner and chase you down. From this position you can take advantage of the same generous backstab detection as with the matador stab, and click to finish the job. Or, using the terrain to your advantage, you can pull off the lesser successful stair stab. By using a height advantage on a chasing enemy, you can simply jump over their hitbox and land just enough behind or on top of them to count as backstab range. This is quite difficult to practice, as the timing and distance vary slightly depending on the walk speed of the class chasing you, and also any player who is remotely familiar with Spy will be able to see what you're doing a mile away. Giving away what you're attempting to pull off in this sense is called telegraphing, and as Spy we want to avoid telegraphing as much as possible, so there are a few things you can do to increase the chance of securing a successful stair stab, such as performing what is called a blind stair stab, where you continue facing away from your enemy when jumping over them, relying on pure intuition and experience to essentially get when your enemy will be beneath you and jumping backwards at just the right moment. As a bonus, you will feel like a complete badass when pulling this off, smacking you with a strong hit of confidence that is the essence of playing Spy. Another way to mitigate telegraphing is to use unorthodox props to pull off stair stabs. They may be called stair stabs, but that doesn't mean you need to use stairs to do it. Almost any prop that puts you at a height advantage to your target can get the job done, even props as small as teleporters, which work well in dispatching chasing engineers. Small height advantages work especially well, as less time spent in the air means less time for your enemy to figure out what you're doing and attempt to shut you down which can be done really easily with stair stabs, especially when your target is experienced. And remember, always crouch when jumping for a stair stab, just to ensure you'll be within melee range of the victim when you land, and to minimize the chance of you simply bumping into whoever's chasing you. But wait a second, if a height advantage can get you a stab, and enemies can deal knockback to send you higher than them, couldn't you then use that knockback to perform a stair stab? Well, yeah, actually, as it turns out, the objectively coolest looking trick stab is called the Surf Stab, and essentially requires you to surf off knockback from damage sources, such as a soldier's rocket, in order to land on or behind them and stab. The key to doing this consistently is to learn to surf damage and strafe. As it turns out, crouch jumping when you're being fired at with explosives has a much higher chance to send you flying than simply running away would. This can therefore be used either as a defensive tool to escape when you've been caught out, or to perform a Surf Stab. 
This can be done well by learning a weapon's firing speed and to listen out for when it is fired, combined with your distance from the fired weapon, to time your jumps accordingly. When done well and practiced to a decent degree, you'll be surprised how often you can escape situations that would have otherwise rendered you dead. And of course, if the timing lines up just right, such as when a projectile is at the perfect position to propel you towards the enemy rather than away from them, you can go for the cheeky surf stab. This is probably the mechanically hardest to pull off consistently out of any of the stabs, as you don't have as much control over when or how the stab happens, instead anticipating your enemy's aim to decide when the moment is right. This works best against explosives like Soldier's Rocket Launcher and Demoman's Grenades and Sticky Bombs, but can also occasionally work against an Air Blast Happy Pyro, a Force of Nature Scout, a Wrangling Engineer, and even melee hits. There's also drop stabs, which require you to drop from a great height onto your opponent, landing just on the back half of their hitbox and stabbing. Bonus points if you can stab them before touching the ground, sort of market gardener style. Or in contrast, there's the understab, in which you lead a target off a cliff. Okay, maybe a smaller cliff, or any higher ground really, and by strafing under and behind them when they fall, you can position yourself once again within backstab range before they have time to react. Oh, one more thing about trick stabs, it does require you to be looking somewhat towards the same direction as your target, so simply trying to stab their sides often won't work if you're directly facing them. Siegsegv has actually made a really fascinating video demonstrating how exactly backstab detection works, and I highly recommend checking it out. I'll link their video in the description if you're interested. In a lot of cases, you may find yourself accidentally inventing your own trick stabs, as long as you know how to strafe efficiently. Strafing is basically the mechanic of using your A and D keys, left and right, in order to move around rather than looking forward and holding W. This lets you remain unpredictable, allows you to dodge attacks easier, and see more of the battlefield while heading in a different direction, not committing to the direction you're facing. I bring this up because, as well as just being good movement practice, I've found that simply going left or right near opponents can inadvertently open up a backstab opportunity. In more aggressive cases, you can even take advantage of class walk speed to strafe by an enemy's retreating side and stab. All classes walk slightly slower when moving backwards, so if you stay strafing with them, you can theoretically outrun them to their backstab hitbox. This works especially well with classes that walk slower than the spy, i.e. all of them except medic and scout, so if push comes to shove, give circle strafing a try. Your enemy literally won't be able to keep up with facing you and avoiding getting backstabbed, as they have to keep stopping and dragging their mouse to face you while you move at a consistent pace by holding your strafe key. This is a pretty bare bones explanation compared to the very in-depth tutorials people have published. And I mean in-depth. Whew. Yeah, got a bit too technical there for a second. This video could be called Art of the Trick Stab at this rate, so let's dial it back and talk about hitboxes again for a second. Obviously, each class has a different hitbox size, meaning it's easier to bump into some classes than others. However, this also means that different classes have different backstab hitbox sizes. This, combined with the class's sluggish walk speed, makes Heavy the easiest candidate for a backstab, having the largest hitbox for potential stabs. Heavies are also often distracted by shooting something in the distance, which makes them even slower and harder to miss a stab on when their gun is revved up, which also makes a ton of noise that you can use as audio cover for a decloak before going in for a stab. It's also really easy to trick stab a heavy if you get caught out, since it's impossible for them to retreat at such a slow walk speed, so they have no choice but to try and gun you down before you matador them. And if you see a heavy wandering to the front lines, it'll be pretty easy to stalk them and stab when you're within melee range. Stalking players is a pretty easy concept. Since Spy is the second fastest class in the game when undisguised, you can catch up to pretty much any enemy who's walking towards the battlefield. By cutting corners and checking your surroundings before continuing the pursuit, you'll be able to get the stab on a player that you may have been following from spawn. It's just much easier with heavies since he is so abysmally slow. Sorry heavies, it's nothing personal, you're just a really easy class to kill, especially with the kunai, you know, it's like, it's like a free health pack. Okay, anyway, let's say you got the stab. Now what? You're out in the open, you're undisguised because you're probably not using the Eurotunnel reward, and you just got a sweet smack of dopamine because god damn it's satisfying to get a backstab. Focus, because this is the important part, getting away with it, because you've secured the kill, but you haven't secured your life, and a spy is most vulnerable during and after a stab because A, you've drawn attention to yourself, B, you're undisguised and uncloaked, and C, you're in a place where you shouldn't be. So how do you get out of this situation? Well, my answer boils down to these two words, cloak and juke.
Cloaking gives you a whopping 20% damage resistance, and now is the time to make use of it. Chances are someone will have seen your stab and will be looking to avenge their teammate buddy, and they will start shooting at you. And even if you think there's no one around, it's good habit to cloak after a kill anyway, since there's always a chance that a scout can run up to you and meat shot you from behind. It helps you prepare for the unexpected, and cloaking as early as possible reduces the time between clicking the cloak button and becoming fully invisible. So being even partially invisible is better than not being invisible at all, in case you round a corner after a stab and see a soul looking in your direction. The second part, juking, is a lot harder to nail down and takes a lot more experience and practice to get good at, so here are some tips. Number 1. When escaping from an unfavourable situation, go everywhere your enemy doesn't expect you to go. This includes changing directions mid-escape, avoiding all nearby health and ammo kits, and keeping out of line of sight by turning as many corners as you can. Instead of continuing down the corridor, take a left out the window, and keep an eye on when you are fully cloaked. If the enemy catches a flash of your vaguely visible visage, they can deduce from the direction direction that you're facing, which direction you are likely to go next. So if this happens, change directions as soon as you are fully cloaked. This may also mean doing a U-turn when you take damage, since you become briefly translucent whenever you take even the smallest hit, or even bump into an enemy. Another sneaky escape tactic I like to use is to hide where your enemy has already checked. If you see them smack a corner with their melee weapon, they're giving it the golden seal of approval that you are definitely not there, and that this corner will not need to be checked again. So go ahead and hide there while they give other corners the same approving smacks. Most of the time you'll find that you can sit there under cloak until they give up the search. Obviously this is all pretty contextual and doesn't apply to every situation. Sometimes you just have bad luck and be flamed by a rogue pyro, and sometimes the enemy will go to great lengths to ensure your death, such as checking for spies literally the entire game, and this is pretty unavoidable. What happens after the stab will depend on what happened before, and if you picked the right moment before you committed, you should have pretty plain sailing in the escape. There's also your revolver that you can use to deter any would-be chasers from following into your line of sight. Or just use the dead ringer, that works too. One final bit of info I can give is, if you have another spy on your team, help them when they're in a pinch. If they fail to stab and are suffering the consequences from a determined enemy, imagine what that enemy is thinking. They have caught the spy out, it's over, that spy is finished. They no longer need to watch their back because the thing that was threatening their back is now in front of them, exposed and at a safe distance. This is where you come in. A target that is this distracted is literally the easiest stab there is, especially if it's a heavy. Again, I'm sorry heavies, it's just too easy, it's not my fault. Blame Valve or something. As a bonus, the spy will live to see another day once you've dispatched their chaser, so if you see an opportunity to come to the rescue, take it. Your fellow spy will thank you. Now this fellow spy is going to thank you for watching his video. This has been a long time in the making, and probably my biggest and most complex video to date, so I'm glad you could join me in this journey. And of course, an enormous thank you to my patrons, DemoDudeTF2, Kyoda, MrSirDB, Paisley, and Sparky. Your support is felt and appreciated more than you can know, and makes slogging through the writing, composing, recording, and editing phases that make up a video very much worth it. If you want to become like these fine folks, I have a Patreon where you can see all my videos a day early, as well as a Discord server where you can come chat about pretty much anything with me and other supporters of the channel. Until then, I'll hope to see you in the next one. Cheerio.